Hello there. Today we're going to be reviewing the Flint 2 by GLI Net. They make really good routers and apparently this is one of the best Wi-Fi 6 routers out there. And apparently it's also one of the best for VR. So we're going to compare this and test it out, do all the specs. Quick specs for the Flint 2. It has a dual band 2.4 and 5 GHz channel. So it has one WAN port and five LAN ports. It has one USB 3.0 port. It has really good VPN performance. It has a 1GB DDR4 RAM and an 8GB eMMC. My primary router I'm using right now is TP-Link AXE75, which is a Wi-Fi 6E router. It's very popular. So we're going to see how well this Wi-Fi 6 compares to Wi-Fi 6E router for VR. The sole purpose of this test is just for VR. And let's go. Let's get unboxing it. So this router has been recommended by many VR specialists. Uh, although the price point is kind of high, which is why you don't see it used a lot, especially for a Wi-Fi 6 router. But according to some of my friends at Virtual Desktop, this is the best Wi-Fi 6 router to use with VR. Okay, so what's in the box? We have connect with GLI Net, sure. Let's get started, guys, which is a two page sheet. I like how things are more organized these days. Remember back then when you open hardware, they used to give you like five different pages of instruction manuals. Glad it's just two now, two pages. Okay, we got the power adapter, sure. Power adapter comes with different power supply, LAN, Ethernet port, of course, very good. More power supply. And finally, the big boy. Oh, looking sexy. This design is very cool. It's very retro future, like a cyberpunk style. I like it. Nice. So let's see how many LAN ports we have here. We have one WAN port, one WAN slash LAN port, 2.5G. LAN 2, LAN 3, LAN 4, LAN 5. So about five LAN ports plus one extra WAN slash LAN port. Reset button, power. Again, I really like this design. It's so retro. Okay. So, in the box we have power supply, LAN port. And that's it, I believe. Yeah, that's it in the box. Very simple. Very simple box and a nice black box. This is a knife. This is my hands. And this is the AXE75. So you can see the size difference here. It's slightly smaller than the AXE75. You can see it inside here. Weight-wise, it's kind of chunky. I can feel the weight of this router. It's not very light, I'll be honest. In fact, I think it's slightly heavier than the AXE75, but just slightly. Okay, let's get testing. So this is House with Da Vinci. You can see my networking is stable, it's like below 10 ms and I'm running at 500 Mbps on H.264. I'm about 5 meters away from my router in my living room and it's steady. The 500 Mbps, zero frame drops, everything looks great. 
Christmas show. So this is a stress test using Airlink. Airlink is the free meta app for PC VR. So I'm at 500 Mbps here. You can see it has a bit of network drops. And here, interesting test. I'm pushing it all the way to 960, which I thought wasn't possible with 5GHC. It's possible, but it's, it's dropping network frames you can tell there's like 300 plus frames drop um, i don't recommend it but it's possible and you could do it in 960 on 5 ghc okay so my router is right here so when it's right next to the router it's minus 20. i'm gonna walk over here so it shows green it's like i want to say it's about minus 36 not too bad high confidence so now I'm at the furthest end, the opposite end of my house, and it's about minus 58. This is with my, my regular weak router. This one's worse, it's minus 65. And this is using the TP-Link AXC75, and it's also about 65, minus 65 here. So it's weaker compared to the Flynn 2 and the furthest point in my house. And here's the furthest point in my house, and it's about minus 68, minus 74. This is very high. I don't know how it's it's gonna be really bad. And here we are with the Flint 2. We are one door away, and as you can see, it's 2400 Mbps. Much better. Solid. Okay, and this is the 5 GHz for the AXE75, 1200 Mbps, but still terrible, it's not full bars. We are behind one door, okay, this is 6 GHz, and we are behind one closed door. As you can see, the signal is terrible for the AXE75, pretty bad signal for networking. 1152, terrible. Okay, so these are my settings for the Flint 2. The okay, first thing you want to do is go to network, network mode, and then to make it a true uh, dedicated router, I'm going to set it to access point. This is if you're using it for a dedicated router. And I'm not going to go into much about what dedicated router is. Yeah, I'm going to leave some links in the description, but basically it's connecting your modem to your router. And then this router is specifically just for VR. So this is if you want pure PC VR wireless experience, this is the best of the best you're going to get. So you want to change it to access point for that and you click apply. So when you switch your router to AP mode, you're going to lose the IP address that you originally had to get to the admin page. Easiest way to do it is to go to your modem admin page and then find the IP address to the new router. I, but if you can't find it, then you can use this called Angry IP Scanner. It is an app that lets you detect which IP is being used. And once you've started the scan and the scan is complete, you can sort it by ping and then you can find the one that has the port that's being accessed so you can tell which one's being used right now. I mean just it's just quite simple to find out which <laughs> IP address is not the one that you're not looking for and then the last one is probably the one that you're looking for. So just copy the IP address and then that will be your new admin page for your Flint GLI Net router. Once we found a new IP address, I'm going to go to wireless and I'm going to turn off 2.4 GHC because we're not going to be using that for a dedicated router. I'm just going to keep on 5 GHC. Let's modify the settings. I'm going to transmit at max or high. I'm keeping mine at max. And you can change the password if you like. And keep this on NACAX. <clears throat> okay, for the bandwidth, if you don't really know what you're doing, Keep it on 80 MHZ. This is 80 is good if you have a if you have a lot of neighbors, a lot of network congestion, a lot of people around you. It's always a good idea to keep 5 GHC on 80 MHZ. However, if you want the maximum bandwidth, you can switch it to 160. 
So 160 is going to give you 2400 Mbps and ADMHC is going to give you six, uh, sorry, 1200 MB, Mbps. So that means you get more bandwidth for 160. If you don't really know what you're doing and you have a lot of neighbors around, you just keep this on 80 and auto and you're done. However, if you're a power user and you want the max, max you're going to get possible, you're going to switch to 160 and then you're going to find a channel that works best for you. So you could, you could keep it on auto, but personally, if you want the best network with the least congestion, especially on 160 MHZ, you're going to want to get an app, a Wi-Fi scanner app, to help you detect which channel has the least congestion around you. So I'm using this one. You can see 2.4 is super crowded, but we're not using 2.4, so don't worry about that. And these are all the network people around me. And these channels right here, super congested between level, uh, like the lower ones, 44 to 60. And the higher ones also really congested, like 165 onwards. So you can sort it by channel. You can see here, a lot of my neighbors are using 50, 42, the lower ones. And on the higher channels, it's also heavily congested with 150s. So right now, mine is set on 104, which no one else is using around me. They're using 160 and 124, as you can see here. And I'm the highest right now because this channel no one else is using. So find a channel that is empty that no one else is using. <clears throat> so I'm going to set mine on 104 or even 108 as I don't think anyone's using 104, 108. Yeah, so the, the key is just to find a channel that no one else is using in the least amount of congestion. So if I pick the lower channel like 44, it's going to be congested as hell and that's going to make your network shitty. If you put it in high, it's also really congested. Keep mine on 104, apply, done. And that's really it. That's what I like about this, uh, the Flint 2. It's just quite easy, not a lot of tweaking to do. Just make sure your firmware is up to date, just update everything. And yeah, I think it's really easy to do the settings for this. So pros and cons of the Flint 2. Pros, it is probably the strongest Wi-Fi 6 router I've ever used. And it's so powerful for VR. The strength and transmit distance is extremely good. I think I prefer this over the Wi-Fi 6E TP-Link router I was using. Cons, it does not have 6 gigahertz. There's a Flint 3 coming, but that's Wi-Fi 7, so no 6 gigahertz. The Flint 2 also tends to heat up quite a bit based on my testing, but that's not really a big con, I guess. Honestly, not many cons with the Flint 2. In summary, I really think the Flint 2 is the most powerful Wi-Fi 6 router for VR. Definitely recommend it as a dedicated router. If you don't plan to get Wi-Fi 6E, this is the one you want for sure.